I bring to you all fraternal greetings from the Christian Association of Nigeria and I welcome you to this very important meeting which is indeed the last in the series for the year 2022. It is my hope and prayer that this year will end well for all of us even as we look forward to another year that holds a lot of promises for Nigerians by the grace of the Almighty God. The theme of this last quarterly meeting is Peaceful and Credible Elections for National Renaissance. And this underscores the importance the direct members and the rest of us attached to the 2023 general elections in our country. It is indeed a year of opportunity as we look forward to a peaceful and credible poll that will usher in a new set of political leaders that will bring about a new Nigeria. Election is a democratic norm practiced by many countries of the world. and It is a process of choosing someone for a public office by voting. This is the basis of democracy and it should be devoid of violence, coercion, intimidation, manipulation, denial, and death threats. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted unanimously by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948 recognizes the integral role that peaceful and credible elections play in protecting the fundamental rights of citizens to participate in a free, fair, and peaceful electoral process. While the nation prepares for the polls in 2023, serious questions and doubts are being expressed about Nigeria's capacity and the political will to conduct free fair, credible, and peaceful elections. Since independence in 1960, violence and electoral irregularities have become constant features of the process of electing the country's leaders. And the most worrisome point is always the number of deaths often recorded in the process. Politics of corruption, intimidation, Exclusion and violence are now regarded by some elements in the society as, a necessary, as necessary weapons of political victory in our country. <clears throat> this ugly trend robs the Nigerian voters of the opportunity to freely choose their leaders. As we navigate the process to the 2023 general elections, the world is watching to see if there will be a relatively peaceful transition or a repeat of the familiar, ugly past always filled with pre- and post-election violence. As a faith leader, I am convinced that this ugly history of pre- or post-election violence will not be repeated if we all decide to halt the trend through strategic conversation that appeals to the conscience of the political class like we are doing here today. <clears throat> Unbridled ambition and cutthroat competition among Nigerian politicians is a major part of the problem. Even people with no coherent political ideology and development agenda of any kind also engage in do or die politics. The other issue is the lack of transparency in the elect electoral process and the ungodly alliance of some security agents with the political class to subvert the process and confer undue advantage on any political party against the other, on one political party against the other. All this makes the process tense, frightening and disenfranchising to the weak and feeble-minded. There is no doubt in my mind that the 2023 general elections hold the key to our national renaissance, freedom from insecurity, economic subjugation, and all other social vices that have dotted our ugly past. 
But for this to happen and usher in the expected freshness in our body polity, the new set of leaders will emerge post-2023 elections and all of us must collectively resolve to deal with the following. Number one, culture of impunity that places the political class above the law and deprives the ordinary citizens of their legitimate rights. Number two, we have to deal with the institutions, the absence of the institutions that check or regulate electoral violence, thereby allowing defaulters to get away with the heinous crimes that ought to be punished. Number three, perception of Nigerian politics as a rewarding financial investment that must be recouped after elections are won. This skewed ideology advances the culture of winner-takes-all syndrome and makes it a mortal sin to lose an election in Nigeria. We must also deal with hate campaign speeches by politicians that paint the opposition in a derogatory and defamatory language in a bid to make him or her unacceptable to the voting public even if he or she has a better understanding of our development challenges. We also have to deal with rigging of elections that brings in an opera candidate, an unpopular candidate, and into power as against the will of the masses. Youth unemployment that renders millions of our able-bodied young men and women economically inactive and vulnerable to abuse by unscrupulous politicians must also be dealt with. And finally, we must also deal with unguarded speeches by religious and community leaders that will not give a level playing ground to candidates vying for elective positions. Therefore, the need for a peaceful and credible elections can never be overemphasized, bearing in mind that the opposition has their consequences for our collective aspirations. Election violence leads to death of many people, particularly the young, the young people who are the bedrock of tomorrow's nation building. Violent elections scare away many people who would have loved to participate in politics and offer their expertise in rebuilding our nation. Electoral apathy, which is considered high in Nigeria today, is a product of electoral violence and this gives the few misguided politicians the opportunity to vote or declare their unpopular candidate winner where the opposite should have been the case. The imperatives of a peaceful and credible elections makes it mandatory for us as religious leaders to play active roles in this transition process. This is a time we must use our various platforms to place special emphasis on the messages of hope, peace, brotherliness, unity, integrity, and tolerance. We must shun all tendencies that could aggravate whatever challenges we might be experiencing at the moment. We shall surmount them and our nation shall become great again. The election of 2023 is a valid opportunity for Nigerians to turn around the fortunes of this country. It is important, therefore, that we use our leadership positions to mobilize our members to come out on the days of election to vote in the candidates that can bring healthy balance in governance, which will restore the confidence of the people in government. Peaceful and credible elections is the best parameter to measure a healthy democracy. Eminent religious leaders Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at the level of the Christian Association of Nigeria, we shall stand to be counted in this process, and we are committed to it, to make sure that we have a credible, <coughs> free, and peaceful election. <coughs> we are already making plans to deploy electoral observers in major polling units across the states in Nigeria to observe 2023 elections. They shall work together with other observers, including those from the international community, 
and Nigeria's development partners. This has become customary to us as we always, as we also observed the 2019 polls. Our reports and findings shall be published and made known to all Nigerians. This is the least we can do as a body interested in peaceful and credible elections. Our national renaissance is possible in the year 2023, but it requires our collective action. And on this note, I pray that the Lord will help us, give us a better and a new Nigeria. I thank you for listening.